Hello everyone, in this video, you're going to learn how to create a line graph in SysUI. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I will do is I will go ahead and create a stock structure and it will only have a price. So we can go, just go ahead and say double, basically the price of the stock. So this can be some sort of a model that you will have in your application. All right, so let's go to the content view. Now, inside the content view, we are going to provide some sort of a historical data. So we will get a list of stocks. I've created a function called get historical stocks. And you can see that we are simply picking up some random pricing for the stocks. We will also get labels, meaning the horizontal label, whatever it will need to be displayed. And the labels that we are getting for years is from 2015 to 2021. Now, inside the content view, we can call those functions. The one is going to give us the prices of the stocks, the one thing that we need to plot. And the labels are simply going to be represented on the x axis. So let's go ahead and call get historical stocks. We can map on it. And we can simply go ahead and return the price of the stock because that's what we want to plot. And we can even convert this into integer if you want to. For the labels that will be displayed in the x axis, we will simply go ahead and call get yearly labels. Okay, great. So we have the prices and we have the labels, but now the question becomes, that, okay, how do we plot them? The best way would be to create some sort of a control. So I'm going to go ahead and create a line chart view, which is a simple view. Now, if you're wondering why am I creating it over here, why not create it in a separate file? You should definitely create it in a separate file. And Eventually, we'll try to move this into a separate file once it is working. So we are starting in very small steps. Body, some view, and we will have a stack, which will return. When we're starting out, I just want to return something very basic. So I'm just going to say line chart view, and that's it. Now, let's go ahead and try to display this line chart view into our application. So I'm going to go ahead and use a V stack. I mean, obviously, you don't really need a V stack. I'm going to say line chart view. And hopefully, it will simply just say line chart view, as you can see right over here. Now, the line chart view will perform operation on the value that you're going to pass in, which will be the prices and the labels. So let's go ahead and create values array and we're going to say this is integer and the labels which will be simply printed out on the horizontal x-axis we will also go ahead and get the width of the screen because we may be needing that in the future now we need to pass those information and we can also pass the title but right now it's fine uh, we can go ahead and pass those information the values in this case will be prices and the label are simply just the labels. So now the question is, inside the line chart view control that you have created or the view that you have created, how would you go about in creating the line chart? So I'm going to go ahead and create a private property called path. And the whole point of this property called path is to return you the path. So that will be composed of creating the lines. The first thing I'm going to check is if the values is empty, then there's really no need to do anything because probably you didn't really pass any values to plot. So if you're passing nothing, we are just going to get nothing. All right, so we can just go ahead and create you an empty path and display that, which is basically displaying nothing. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and create offset. The offset is so that we can plot our points at a particular intervals. So screen width, whatever the width is, 
and then we will go ahead and perform the operation of values.count. So whatever the value that you're providing, we will divide it by screen width or the screen width divided by the values.count so that we can kind of get like the equal width. Path equals to path. Path dot move. So this is where it will start moving to a particular point. And for x axis, we can simply say the offset, which we will increase later. And for y axis, we'll just go ahead and start with the first value in our values array. But we need to plot other points. Uh, there might be some other values in the values array. So let's go ahead and loop through it. So value in values. And now we can go ahead and create or add line. So we will say CG point and whatever the offset is. So it will be offset. Probably at this point, it might be a good idea to in, have increased the offset. So we haven't really done that part. So I will say offset x. And probably I should have increased the offset, but we will increase it in a way, in a, in a matter of time over here. Let's say offset x and offset x plus equals to. So now the question is, well, how much do you want to plus equals to? Uh, this will be the actual screen width. So let's go ahead and calculate screen width and then divide by values.count. Now this is not really going to change. So perhaps you can save this, store this somewhere before, instead of calculating it again and again. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and make sure that we are getting all these values and we are incrementing our offset, which is good. Now we can go ahead and return the path. Now we have returned the path, but we haven't really used the path. So let's go ahead and try to use the path. So if I go over here, instead of the text, if I say path dot stroke a particular color, uh, let's go ahead and say color dot white. Well, in this case, black and then line width, we will just say 2.0. So let's say that what it tries to create, and you can see that it's already starting to create a graph based on our random values. All right. Now, the first thing we need is I want the graph to be kind of like at the bottom of the screen. I also want some sort of a labels to be displayed. For displaying the labels, it's actually pretty simple because you will simply go ahead, run a edge stack kind of a loop, and now you can see the labels being displayed at the bottom. All right. The graph looks fine, but it would be nice if the graph is kind of like in this area. So over here, perhaps. So in order to do that, what we can do is we can perform a rotation so that the graph can actually rotate. So let's go ahead and perform a rotation effect. And the only thing we want to do is we want to just rotate it 180 degrees. So there we go. Once we ro rotate to 180 degrees and we can say center, the graph is kind of like rotated and it's kind of like you when you're rotating, uh, kind of like a paper into half. That's what we have done. But we also need to make sure that the graph is starting at the correct location. Now it's starting from right to left instead of left to right. So now we can go ahead and create it the correct one. All right. If you want, you can also give some sort of a maximum frame kind of thing for the graph. So if you want to put it somewhere on the top, you can see there. So now the graph is on the top. And that is pretty much it. I mean, you can add a lot of other stuff to it. Like uh, if you want uh, the graph to look a little bit nicer, I can put some edge stack over here. And now uh, like a different color for the V stack in the count, uh, content view. So it kind of looks like that now. And I can always go and see that if I can change this color to be white. So there we go. So now we have created that part. If you want something else, like if you want to control to, to be like a text to be displayed, so you can actually go ahead and add text to it. If you want a little bit more margin, you can add obviously a spacer or something. It will push back everything. So it will go in the bottom. Uh, but you, you have complete control 
over how things will actually look like. Uh, we can go ahead and give it a little bit more heading so we can say large title over here. So there we go. All right. So this is how we create a very simple kind of a graph, a line graph in CIF UI. Uh, and maybe in the future, I will also go over that how you can create a bar graph. I have covered bar graph before, but maybe we'll, maybe we'll cover that uh, again, that how the bar graph can be displayed. All right. So there you have it. Uh, this is how you will display a line chart in CIF UI. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I have a lot of different courses ranging from iOS development, Swift UI, MVVM design pattern, React course, uh, async and await concurrency, combine RxF core data, and a lot more. So definitely go ahead and check out my courses on Udemy. And the best way to check out my courses is a link which is in the YouTube description. So check out the link and I hope you enjoy my courses. Thank you so much.